And uh, can you say Kane Hoa Lani? Yeah, Kane Hoa Lani. And Kane Hoa Lani is the name of the sun in Hawaii. Yeah, the sun get one name, uh, the moon get name, um, certain winds, all the winds in Hawaii, we have names for them. Um, all the different currents that we see in certain places, there's a name. And so something tells us that there's a name just like us. So then that means there's something to that. Yeah, there's something definitely to naming and the names of all the things that um, live in the Hawaiian world. And when I talk about the Hawaiian world, um, I'm talking about from Kumukahi Point here in Puna up above the, the traversing of the sun that goes all the way past us all the way to a place called Mokumanamana. Mana. Can you say Mokumanamana? Mana? Moku Mana Mana. And Mokumanamana Mana is inclusive of the Hawaii Island chain. It's not just to Kauai and Ihau. And so Mokumanamana, Mana, we refer to those islands as the Kupuna Island. The chants are the data that tells us this is what it was, this is what it is. The stories that are connected to those chants are also the data that gives us the information that says, yeah, that's where, that's where it went. Yeah, so, so the canoes went up, went up, and then they came back down. And so those were some of the migrations that were happening in Hawaii. During a period of time, um, the canoes were going up and down. It's like the traffic, yeah? It's like uh, uh, on the highways. Yeah, that's the highway. Um, the mindset, the mindset was not we are separated by the ocean. The mindset was always we are connected through the ocean. But the point is, is that along the way things got named, places was named, um, and then people settled. So there's there's this this thing called uh, when you when you leave a place, right, and you migrate, whatever kanu, um, there's a reason why you left. And then there's a reason why you stayed. And then there's a reason why the canoes was not needed anymore. Because people found a space and a place that they began to develop a very deep relationship with in the land, the sky, and the ocean. And so because of that, uh, there is that longevity that longevity of relationship to this particular space as it is with all spaces. But in the Hawaii world, in the Hawaii world, 
we can trace our genealogies back to those canoes and some of us even before the canoes. And so that's where we talk about a little bit about um, environment, environment and kinship. Yeah. And so that kinship over a sustained amount of time, people keep having this, this relationship just as you do today. You can only formulate that over time. You can only build that relationship over time. So if you can imagine thousands of years of building that kind of relationship with the environment, which then turns around in the perspective of the kanaka, which means person, yeah? Kanaka means person. Um, and then they start to uh, name them. So sustainability and the abilities to sustain our spaces and our places has to do for for uh in and, and and excuse me for the lack of a better word indigenous person or native hawaiian in the hawaiian world is um or kanaka maoli if you want to call it that there's so many names we could say um is to to continuously build that relationship and and so we have documents that tell us how that was done prior to this time, yeah. And so we can go back as far as the, the Hawaiian creation chant. When, they, when uh, we have a Hawaiian creation story, it's called the Kumulipo. And the Kumulipo tells us about how things were, in the Hawaiian worldview, uh, how things were created, even to the succession of things, when they were created, what time frame. There's a time frame, not this time, it's more this time. Yeah, watching this. Um, it's more time frame when things kind of, the observer of the time, seeing the changes in, in things happening. So uh, it tells us when certain things were born, how they look, what was born over there in the ocean, and at the same time, what was born on the land. And they started to partner like that, ocean, land, ocean, land. And then we began to see the things that are closely related. When this thing is going off in the ocean, this thing is going off on land. Yeah, that's how, that's how we know that they're partners. And over time, it begins to uh, formulate a sort of um, relationship with you and the land. But the thing that it is that is really cool is that as time progresses and time moves on, you move on with that. You move with that relationship and you're, you're, you're born children and they born children and they born children. And then they kind of sort of inherit the sort of um, thoughts and, and processes from you telling the story. That's the part that's really cool is that we get to tell the story. We get to know the chant. We get to read the story. We get to interpret that story for our children and their children, and so on and so forth. That is at the base of environmental kinship. And everybody has it. You don't have to be in a space to always, for thousands of years, to know that. We just happen to be in that space. I was just happen to be born here. Yeah, and, and have inherited that. Some of those things are inherited, a lot of it is inherited, and it's not so much important how it's inherited, it is, but also in the now, what do we do with that inheritance? That's even more important. That's, that's the root of it all, comes from the inheriting of those things, but also how do we exist today in this space, in our Hawaii, all of ours, because you know, you have to be responsible. You, you swim in the ocean, you get to be on the land, you be in the sun, you drink the water from the mountain. Therefore, by default, you are also responsible. Yeah, and that's, I, that's the same wherever we go. And so today's time, we have these relationships still going on. And the really cool thing is we have relationships. And when I say relationships, the word for this kind of relationship is pilina. Can you say pilina? Pilina, pilina means that there's a pili. 
There's many closenesses. Pili means to be close to something. Na makes it plural. When we have that kind of pilina with something, there then becomes that bond, right? That bond then happens, and it's not a bond that's come from here. It doesn't come from your mind. It more so comes from your gut, from your internal world, from all this stuff, you know, like the stuff that you feel when you're in love. And all these go jiggy jiggy, right? <laughs> Or when you when you are angry and this stuff gets like that, yeah. When you feel that and you feel that more than not, that's when you when you building pilina. Today's time we feel that, and thank God we still feel that. Yeah, if we didn't feel that, we'd be in big 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 trouble. Yeah, and so it's my it's my work to to bring us back to that feeling. Aloha Aina, can you say Aloha Aina? Aloha. Yeah, Aloha Aina is that thing. At the essence of it all, at the root of it all, Aloha Aina is that. If you need to be reminded, think of the things that matter most to you, that's what it is. Yeah. And so the Aina or the land, I, Okina a and e, yeah. Ai means to eat. Yeah. Ai also means food. Na means the plural. Many foods. So many foods. Ai na are the things that we consume. Ai means to consume, to eat. Yeah. And there's many consuming in Hawaii. And it's the mindset. So I'm gonna tell you one very famous name of puna. This. Puna. It's called Pu'ulena. Can you say Pu'ulena? Pu okay, so Pu'ulena is the wind, and every wind has a trait or a characteristic of it. Yeah, they act a certain way. And that's not me that we name them, that's from way long ago. So then, so then I think about why it's named that. Pulena is an old, big creator, and not too many people know about her, but she's, she's big. She's big and she's deep, yeah? And so, Pulena crater, there's a wind, and the wind comes in, and the wind sweeps through that crater, and it comes out like this, and it blows up and across us this way, and up. You can kind of tell, you can kind of tell when you're at Pulena. But because of that, there were many chants that were written about Pu'ulena. There are many things that Puna is famous for. And it's famous for not just Lauhala, but the Pu'ulena wind. So those, that was given that name because of how the wind interacts with the space and then how it interacts with us. Wherever it is that you spend a lot of time, in your lifetime thus far. Is there a place that, and if it's here, great. If this is the catalyst for you being, being able to adjust and see that, great. But what place for you has been the catalyst for you to form that kind of relationship? Is there a place? Is there that relationship? Because we can all love the land. We cannot say it's beautiful. We cannot say there's no other beauty like Hawaii. True that for me, right? It's true. Um, but what about it is beautiful? What? I can tell you what is beautiful about this ocean moving like this right now. Yeah, and what's that called? Yeah, okai kai. Yeah. So the point of the matter is that when we find that, that place, that space to really engage um, not just our, our um, academics, but our spirit, <coughs> and moves us that way, we form those relationships. Those are the relationships that are formed. And once we start to regulate it and co be consistent with that relationship, like any relationship between you and I, children and parents, parents and whatever, community to community, 
that relationship grows more and more and more and it becomes second nature. First nature, I don't know. Second. Yeah, and so uh, in, in our understanding, um, that's how we connect to environment. How that speaks to uh, sustainability and you know, aole pau ka ike ka halau ho okahi ea. That means not all knowledge is taught in one school, but in my school, that's the relationship we build. And we build that kind of relationship knowing particulars about a particular space. And then when we, when, when I say we in, in traditions of Hawaii, um, that is the feel in relationship to a space. Because the aina, whether it's here on the aina or up in the sky or in the ocean, it's one. At some point, it was separated into ocean, sky, land. Mauka, makai, uh, different divisions, yeah. But it's all one. Everything is one. And so when we, when we talk about the mountain being our kupuna, it's because that pilina, Mauna Kea, that pilina is very, it's, it's been that way over years, not just now. And we've inherited that because of our kupuna. It's the same as when we say we have a pilina with the lua pele, with the pele, because it's been that way from the migration of time for Hawaii people, yeah, for the Hawaiian. It, it gives us that track of knowing. And so we all are environmentally connected. Yeah, where is it that you find it? And then if it's here, how does that come out of you? Yeah, how does that come out of you? Because, because we can all say this is a beautiful place, but what about it? Part of inheriting environment and environmental names is to take care of them because we become responsible. It now becomes great, great kuleana. Can you guys say kuleana? Kuleana. Yeah. Kuleana simply means responsibility. So responsibility just means that we love where we're at. We intend to have our children's 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 children be here on this landscape for as long as the Pele will allow us to be here. And so what is it that we need to do to maintain that? Simple like that. Yeah. And that's where the sustainability, not just for the Kanaka, us, comes in. But really, before us, is the land sustainability. And that doesn't come only from planting. That actually comes from, you all know, from the mindset. Before you can even plant anything, your mind has to work to say, I need to plant this. Why? What is this that I planted? Where am I going to plant it? How am I going to take care of it? Is it getting water? Simple like that. Simple. And as I look around the room, I feel like most of us do that yeah? in some form fashion. And if not, get on it. Tea leaf. We're going to plant tea leaf, you guys. <laughs> All my students laughing. Okay, so in this particular chant, how do we build Pilina with environment slash kinship? So something very interesting that I always like to talk about when we talk about Pele, because in Hawaii, Pele is known as the magma, yeah, the lava. Yeah. And so whatever whatever kind of deity thing we think about nowadays and days prior and whatever is what it is. But when we look in the dictionary, um, Pele simply means magma. Yeah, And any volcanic activity that has to do with the magma. So that is magma coming out of the ground, how it comes out of the ground. These are just a few things. The smoke that is called Uahia Pele from that kind of activity the ocean that is activated when the pelic turns into the to the ocean, all of the little details, that is all of pelic. 
the color in the sky, the color on the top of the mountain, the colors that come out in the sunset, that is the same as the Pele. All of that is considered under the umbrella of volcanology slash of the Pele. This is the stuff that the ologists study. Yeah, they study that. They study them, and then they study about what kinds of rocks come out of the Pele, yeah? And so we've been studying that from, I don't know, long time. <laughs> yeah, kind of long already. <laughs> Way before I was born, way before my grandma was born, before her grandma and her grandma and her grandma and her grandma. So it's, 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 what, it's what it is. Yeah? And so there's different facets. Can you say, Uwahi? Uwahi. Apele. Uwahi Apele. Uwahi Apele. Yeah, you should have Uwahi Apele. Yeah? And that has to do, Uwahi means the smoke rising in the sky. The Uwahi of Pele, of Pele. And so all of those things have to do with fire and the fire. Therein is the godliness. Okay, so, so we have interpretations today. Why would Pele be female and not male? Somebody. Creating land. Creating land. And what is that all about? Birth. Birth. Birthing the land. It's a very female, female function. Yeah, it's very female. I don't know any man that gave birth. <laughs> but they help give birth, yeah, when you time for birth. Yeah, so that's why it's likened to female nest. Because it's the birthing of the land. The, the land. Yeah, and so that's how come it's female. Yeah. Another reason it's female is because in our stories of the migration of Pele and the Pele clan is that she was female in the story. Yeah, and she, she, she traversed, she was the boss lady. She was the boss lady on the canoe, nobody messed with her. She threw you off. <laughs> There's the part of the story where they go up to the Northwest and her brother not fulfilling his function yeah, things broke on the canoe, she would kick him off. She told him, get off. You're putting us all in danger now because you're not focused. Get off. And he did. And then he started to cry. So they left him there. <laughs> they left him there. And as they were leaving, she could hear him crying. And she felt <clears throat> bad. So she turned around and picked him up. But... But he learned the lesson, right? It's serious stuff when you're in the ocean and you try to get from point A to point B, <laughs> right? Safely. Even on land, actually. So she was she was sort of like the boss lady. Like no mess with her. But look at the traits characteristics of the lava. It's the same kind of I know we call that. The same characteristic. Like you cannot tell the lava where Fugu. And so we have to succumb to that. We gotta give in to that. We gotta surrender to that. Yeah, at some point. We can prepare ourselves well, we can go leave and prepare our homes, but at the end of the day, that lava flow will go where the lava flow wants to go. Yeah. It's just, and we've how many of us have experienced that? Right? Right. Because it is what it is, right? So in Tahiti, which is where the migration of Pele came from. Um, she's totally a different function. Uh, there are four laws that came out of, um, and they weren't, they weren't made by man. These are the laws that are pulled out because that's what the chants say. And there's four basic ones, and these are the four basic ones. And you guys can read it. And one of the things that we talk about a lot because it's very specific is not that we gotta get out. Yeah. These are called kanavai. Can you say kanavai? Kanavai. And kanavai are the, 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 the laws. And it can be natural laws. These are natural laws that over time um, the people have observed and created in the chants. So you need to be able to know Hawaiian language and then you look at what they're actually saying. And so this is when we, we understand that our our um our relationship with land now has to take on 
another another function yeah such as planting such as sustainable gardening mm -hmm. such as because all of it should come from a place that is rooted deep inside mm -hmm. because that speaks to sustainable things when we feel that that pilina it's rooted yeah, and then it comes out of us in things that we we um, intend to do and things that we want to do that is always great. Yeah, and so these are some of the chants. I'm gonna ask my hula peeps to stand. So we'll do this. Tap tap. I kukulu kapahu kapua kaleo. Kukulu. Kukulu kapahu kapua. Ala hele, ala muku no kane la wakana loa. He ki hoi hoi kana wai. He kai o ki a kana wai. Akua a kana wai. No pele no ko akua la kuku lu kapa hu kapu a kale. He ala hele, ala muku no kane la wakana loa. He ki hoi hoi. kinship has is that its ability for us to look at why it is what we do and then manifest what it is that will be good for the environment right and so these four laws this is all in English but these four laws have been pulled out of chants and specifically related to Pele yeah and so these are called the Kanavai of Pele Kanavai of Pele and so as we go and we learn about the different uh, things. One of the the major things are what we call. Can you say ki ho i ho i? Ki ho i ho i. Because we are Kanaka people living mm -hmm. in the now. That ki ho i ho i has to do with returning. Returning. Ho i ho i means to return. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so ki ho i ho i kanavai um, is in here, and it talks about when when the land is ready, and it shows that it's ready. It's not, and when do we know that? Well, it's not falling in the ocean. It's not, you wouldn't step on them and people won't go through. It's not hot. When the land hot, that means not time yet from human beings. Yeah? Today, we saw in a rush, I gotta get back to my place. I gotta go home. I get one farm in there. I gotta, we gotta bulldoze the road, okay? Okay, but this relationship here with this kind of life tells us maybe now what I do right now. But go ahead. Yeah? Because we don't want to fight it. Because at the end of the day, the Pele will do what the Pele will do. <laughs> but for me, sleep, like, I sleep good. But for me to say this to people means that I'm not responsible for you. Okay? Because you know, you're not a kind of life. And so, this type of kanavai comes to us from chance and apilina that we have and environmental kinship that we have with our our places. And so, what do you Okay, I'm going to skip over this. But this has to do with the mauna and the relationship we form with the mauna and what happened yeah, with the mauna. And the mauna is mauna loa, as we all know, and mauna kea, koala lai, which are the three major mountains, and kohala mountains are the major guys and players on this island. They are mountains. They're the ones that that are in charge of our environment. They take care of us really. Because if never have Mauna Kea, well one, we don't want too much water, right? Two is that Mauna Kea uh, protects this Hawaii island from a lot of storms. You guys know this, yeah. And so they're the they're the real kukuna.
and he wrote about so contrary to popular belief, where Uncle Roberts is is not Kalapana. Even my own family says that. I go Kalapana because you know like according to this song and according to our time in Kalapana, Kalapana was so much fun. Like it was just so much fun. You could swim there, you could play volleyball. It, it was always happening. You know, all the Hawaiians was out, like all the villages, people were fishing, making boy, everybody was together. Yeah, it was the whole village. And so I think that's why people still call the whole place Kalapana. But it's actually where Uncle Roberts is, it's called Kainu. Yeah, and there's a reason why it's called Kainu. But anyway, in this song, my pops, he remembers Kalapana fondly. And so in the old days, Kalapana is beautiful. You could see every place. You could see it all. And in those places, there's all these little places that had names. And so then he said, it is a beauty. Kalapana it will forever be beautiful. Um, in the old days, uh, Kalapana was the space or the place that would take people in. And, and, and that's actually true even in old, old, old stories. And so um, the Madihini would go and they were invited in. And actually, it's still kind of like that today. Kaniu uh, Moi O Queen Emma, that's a famous, famous thing about Kalapana. And it's the coconut trees that were planted in honor of Queen Emma when she came to visit. And those coconut trees were planted like this. And eventually they grew over the road. And I don't know how many of you actually was around in those days but they kind of grew up sideways at a slant. It was when the Ali'i came to the Aina to visit the people, um, the people got excited and they wanted to do beautiful things that the, that the Ali'i would always remember them for. And so there's a place called Waiko Olihilihi in Te Aau that when the Ali'i walked through there with all of their entourage that they stopped in that first water and, and wash their face. Yeah. And the people of that place put all the um, the petals of the ohi up. We had the roses in the water thing down already. Yeah. <laughs> we know how to do it. And so when the Ali would go to wash their face, all of that would touch their face. That's beauty. Yeah, that was beautiful. So the people did stuff like that because they wanted to honor their Ali and have their Ali feel good. Yeah, and so when Queen Emma came, those trees were being planted for her. And as the trees grew, they grew at the slant. So moi new means that the um, the new that sleeps, that sleeps like that goes down like this. And so that's a story in itself that is kept from the relationship that people have. And then this is my song for Kalapana in the old days. It was so very clean. Kalapana will always be beautiful. And that's um, a song that he wrote. Um, he wrote that song and then our mom put it to music. And so those are the, the stories that come out of this particular thing. And this is, uh, don't look at that one. <laughs> um, this is my ohana still creating, still uh, building stories, still telling stories, still singing the melodies, um, and talking about our, our lives in the space and how much we love the Aina. And so when when I think about environmental kinship, I think about longevity. I think about sustaining that particular um, aloha for Aina. Aloha really from the from the internal self. And that is 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 sustainable to me. Because we're all capable of that if we haven't done that already. So which is why I come back to where is it that you felt this pilina? Because it's that pilina that creates the next pilina and the next pilina and the next one. All the way till you get children and grandchildren and tell them the story of wherever it is that you build this community with.